All change, Barry O'Farrell swept to power in a Liberal landslide. We won tonight's seats we've never dreamed of ever winning. Bowing out, Christina Keneally takes the rap for Labor's defeat. I will not contest the leadership of the New South Wales Labor Party. Wild scenes as anarchists hijack a London protest. And Brett Stewart's triumphant return to Brookvale Oval. This is Nine News with Peter Overton. Good evening. Barry O'Farrell has rewritten the political landscape of New South Wales, leading the Liberals to an emphatic victory over Labor. The win was never in doubt, just the scale of it. From a comfortable majority in the lower house, Labor could now find itself with as few as 19 seats, while the coalition could have 67. Five seats remain in doubt. That's a statewide swing of around 17% of the coalition, and the sweetest victories were in the West, where Labor's heartland was gutted. Barry O'Farrell led his Liberal conquerors of the West. The region will be at the centre of his government. My heart uh, and my, uh, my future uh, will always depend on success in Western Sydney. Transport is the Premier-elect's number one priorities, and improvements are needed most across Western Sydney. Last night in Parramatta, it resembled a rare grand final celebration at the league's place. There was even chanting. But their premiership champion stayed calm. How are you feeling? I'm feeling OK, thanks, Kev. Thank you, Tom. Is it bigger and better than you thought? Uh, you know, a win's a win, um, but this is, this is phenomenal. I am very proud of him. I think he's done a great job, and I look forward to him being premier. It's, it is exciting and also very humbling, I think. Elder son Tom, happy and relieved. Pretty proud. He's worked pretty, very hard over the last 16 years, so it's a good result. Nick Reiner is the last Liberal leader to win an election. I'm excited. It's about eight years too late. It's only four years too late, but, yeah, sure, I'm excited for O'Farrell. He's run almost a perfect campaign. Across town in the eastern suburbs, a political wake at the Ramwick Labor Club. The people of New South Wales, who entrusted us with government for 16 years, did not leave us. We left them. And then Christina Keneally left the leadership. But I will not contest the leadership of the New South Wales Labor Party. I believe that the next stage of renewal for our party is best undertaken by a new leader. That will be John Robertson, who was being coy on the subject. It's not going to be a decision I make tonight. My focus tonight's on Blacktown. I'm... Former Prime Minister Bob Hawke put it bluntly into context. I think it must be the lowest point uh, that I can recall, and certainly from my reading of history. I mean, I've been in the party now for over 60 years, and there have been some bloody low points. Uh, but you, uh, you come back. The new Deputy Premier will be Andrew Stoner, who last night celebrated his 23rd wedding anniversary with Cathy. 36.3% swing in Bathurst, to my knowledge, is a record in Australian politics. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, none of my colleagues have seen anything like it. Kevin Wilde, Nine News. And the new Premier, Barry O'Farrell, joins me live in the studio now. Congratulations. Thanks, Peter. 16 years, there's been no change of government. What's the process? When will you be sworn in and when will you be officially running the state? Uh, sitting down with the Head of Premiers tomorrow morning and all those things to be done. But Andrew Stoner, who will be Deputy Premier, and I are very keen to get on with the job to deliver that real change. So this week? This week. This week we want the team up and running. This week we want uh, to start that progress to, to deliver the improvements for this state. Well, you played a smart game. You didn't reveal your full hand during the campaign, but I think now people deserve the detail. We don't have your 100-day plan. We know transport's critical. What else is right up the top of that list must do? Well, hospitals, delivering improvements to those hospitals have been neglected, like, uh, like Hornsby, like uh, Blacktown, like the Northern Beaches, and uh, uh, particularly country hospitals, uh, Wagga, Forbes, Parks and, uh, and Dubbo. And when will we see the difference that your government, you say you will rebuild New South Wales? It'll take a while for the infrastructure backlog to, to be solved, um, to start those projects, but hopefully you'll see a change of culture, a change of the way government operates and a focus on the public's needs once again. Time frame? Well, I think you'll, you'll see them from the moment we're sworn in. You'll see a different approach and people will start to see real benefits. Uh, but the construction of major projects will take time, and that's the legacy of our opponents. When will you know the state of the books, what money you have to play with? Well, one of the first things we'll do is uh, have an independent audit of the state's finances. We're keen to get that information. That's the reason we've decided to delay the budget, so we can get all that sorted out. It's easy to govern from opposition. 
Are you, uh, is this a daunting task? Are you nervous going into this? Well, look, it's, it's exciting, it's energising, but it's also daunting because of the trust that's been placed in us. But I've got the team, we've got the plans that can fix the state. Well, Premier Barry O'Farrell, uh, Premier-elect Barry O'Farrell, congratulations and thanks for coming in. Thanks, Peter. Good on you. Well, everyone knew it was coming, but the losses hit Labor hard. Seat after seat fell to the Coalition. And this morning, Christina Keneally surveyed the wreckage of a party that ruled this state for 16 years. After a hell of a night, there's one place where morning, all ladies. is morning, forgiven. Morning, just uh, off to church with my family and then back to work in the Heffron electorate office tomorrow. Joining the congregation for Sunday Mass, Christina Keneally broke down as she thanked them for their support. From Premier to church mum. And I've just found out that uh, I'm back on my usual spot on the liturgical roster. Apparently I'm now responsible given they all think I have a bit more time. Her government has been obliterated. Some familiar faces to go, David Borgia, Steve Wan, Virginia Judge and Verity Firth. The former Education Minister trumped by the Greens in Balmain. It's 3.7%, it's always been a marginal seat for me. Votes are still being counted, but Keneally's deputy, Carmel Tebbit, has held Marrickville after another tight battle with the Greens. But the bloodbath spilled across Sydney's west, seat after seat in the party's heartland falling to the Liberals. Blue Mountains had been a Labor seat for 16 years. In Riverston, a 30% swing to the Liberals. And Campbelltown elected its first Liberal candidate since 1971. Brian Doyle, a local police officer, will hand in his badge to serve his electorate. When I was transferred out to Broken Hill for three years, uh, we actually chose to come back to Campbelltown. Now, uh, I could have gone anywhere, but Campbelltown's my home now and it's, uh, it's a place that I love. Former Premier Nathan Rees was one of the few Labor MPs in Western Sydney to claim victory. He held his seat but didn't hold back on his party. It's pointless sugarcoating this. Uh, it's pointless shellacking. And they're not wasting time changing the guard at Sussex Street. Amelia Adams, Nine News. To our state political reporter now, Kevin Wilde. Kevin, a changing of the guard. Did it all play out the way you expected? Pretty much so, Peter. Three years of infighting, corruption and scandal has come back to bite Labor in the biggest possible way. The other side to this is that Barry O'Farrell has been underestimated by Labor. He's outsmarted them at times. He's also led a united team. Now it's time for the Premier-elect to deliver and his side are very confident he will do just that. Pete. All right, Kevin, thank you. Like it or not, Canberra will feel the ripple effect from what's happened in New South Wales. The Federal Liberal Party is claiming that national issues played their part while Federal Labor says the poll disaster does not reflect on them. A Liberal stake through Labor's heartland. The New South Wales election massacre was no surprise, but Federal ministers are keeping their distance. This was a state election based on state issues. The opposition has a more damaging theory. The message that is coming loud and clear from the struggling families of New South Wales is that the carbon tax is toxic. You've got to draw a pretty long bow to say that any votes were changed over that part of the campaign. Independents also copped it, namely Peter Besling and Peter Draper, whose electorates overlap with two of the independents who delivered Julia Gillard power. People expected more of the independents in this federal parliament. They haven't delivered. I think it's a bit early to uh, and a bit silly to use a, a New South Wales state election as a barometer. Just like in Victoria, the Greens haven't replicated their federal success. I'm very pleased with the result we got. Hopes are not uh, feet on the ground stuff. Julia Gillard's only response, a statement congratulating the new Premier and warning that people rightly expect governments of all persuasions to work together in vital areas such as health, education and infrastructure. And that's where Julia Gillard's job has become a lot harder. There are now three Liberal Premiers to negotiate with and Barry O'Farrell has already warned he won't be tied to deals his predecessor signed. On the plus side for the PM, there's no longer a toxic New South Wales government damaging the Labor brand. Jane Azapardi, Nine News.